Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm recording. We're in period four now. So uh, starting on question number 20. And question number 20, it is a dilution problem. So we have 10 milliliters. We'll call that volume number one. Now I'm going to, I usually convert these right away into liters. Point, oh, oops. Point oh, oh, 0.001 liters. Wait a minute, did I do that one wrong? I did that wrong. Excuse me, 0 0.01 liters, thank you. And this will be molarity one. These two are associated with each other. They stick together with the subscript. Whether you want to give them a subscript two or one, as long as you keep these two, the same, these are relying on each other, so volume one and molarity one. And we're gonna make a new solution. We'll call this volume two. And if we wanted to change that right away into liters, that'd be 0.5 liters. On these problems, you don't necessarily need to convert them right away to liters, but I'm doing it just because I think it's a good practice for you. And we're looking for the molarity of the diluted solution. So we're starting with 10 milliliters of this, and we're going to add 490 milliliters of solution. We're really diluting this down. And so we're looking for the new molarity. So we should expect the new molarity to be really, really, really low. The base equation... is our, this one, and we're looking for, and this is where I messed up last time, we're looking for molarity two, so we need to divide by V2 to get it all by itself. Am I correct? We're looking for molarity two? Good, I didn't say, I didn't say that. Before. Now we just substitute in the numbers for volume one. I'm gonna put 0 0.01 liters. Now if you didn't convert it to liters, it's, you'll get the same answer because they end up canceling. Molarity one is five molar. And we're dividing that by volume two, which I've already converted into 0.5 liters. And if you didn't convert it into milli, if you, if you kept it in milliliters, they'll just end up canceling each other out and it won't really make a difference. And on this one, let's see, we've got 0.01 divided by 0.5 times five. Did you get 0.01? Excuse me, 0.1? I think, that I do a number wrong? 0 0.01 times five divided by 0 0.5. Yeah, there you go. Point, uh, 0 0.1 molarity. And that's quite a bit smaller than what we started with, and that should make sense. And that'll be the new solution of HCl. Question number 22. If the percent volume is 3%, we're going to just make that 0.03 right away just to save us a step when we do those problems. And the volume of, sol of the solution is 350. Now this will be, this is the total solution on there. What is the volume of the solute? So these, our base equation is going to be your percentage is equal to solute divided by <coughs> solution. And actually, in this case, it'll be milliliters of solution and milliliters of solute. So I've already converted this to 0 0.03 will be equal to, we're looking for how many milliliters, X milliliters of solute. And they're telling us the total solution is 350 milliliters. And so now I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 350 to get rid of it over here. 350 milliliters. That'll cancel out. And then we gotta multiply that by 350. And what did you all get? What's 350 times 0 0.03? 10 plus 5. And again, it's gonna be 10.5 milliliters of, and they don't tell us what it is, of just solution, of solute solution. And always, when you have to do the calculation, go back and make sure you've answered the right question. And we're just like, what's the volume of the solute? 10.5 milliliters. Number 24. What is the percent volume of ethanol in the final solution when 65 milliliters of ethanol is diluted to a volume? So we're diluting it to this. This is our total volume, total solution. And we're looking for the percent volume, so percent 
is going to be equal to our solute solution, 65 milliliters of solute solution, divided by, and it's diluted to a volume. Okay, that's the new volume. We don't need to add 65 to 225. That is the new volume, 225 milliliters. Then we'll have to multiply that by 100% because that's what we're looking for, percent by volume. And what is 65 divided by 225? 28? Actually, it's 0.28, then he times it by 100. Now, you may need to be careful. That's supposed to be a 28. There we go. 28.8%. Now be careful, because there could be a, a choice on the test that says 0.28, and if you mark that one, that's not correct, because you have to multiply it by the 100, so just be careful. What is the percent? We've calculated the percent there. That'll be the answer. Okay, now we're on second last. What equation is used to calculate parts per million? Milligrams per liter. Remember, 1,000 milligrams per one gram. So you may have to do a conversion on there. Make sure that you're converting whatever numbers you're getting into liters and into milligrams. In fact, let's, we got a practice problem right here. So in this problem, they already tell us what the parts per million is and that we have two liters of solution. How many grams of NaCl are dissolved in it? Now remember in this problem, when we first do the first solution, we're going to end up with how many milligrams, then we'll have to convert that back to grams. So the basic equation for this one is that parts per million is equal to milligrams divided by liters. And in this problem, we're looking for basically, first we got to solve for milligrams. So let's multiply both sides by L, by the number of liters. So the number of liters is two liters times our parts per million, 35,000 parts per million. Now that's gonna equal milligrams and we're not done with the answer at that point. So what's 35,000 times two? Yeah, 35 times 2, so 70,000 milligrams, but we're looking for how many grams. So going back to our, I got to use this, to our conversion over there. So now it's just a conversion problem. 1,000 milligrams equals 1 gram. So these three zeros will cancel out with those three zeros, and the answer is 70 grams and in this case, it was NaCl. So again, on this problem, you could have gone through and gotten 70,000, and there's probably a test choice that says 70,000, and you'd have marked that, not realizing that you, know, you needed to convert it into grams, so just be careful with that. Okay, I've got the chart, I gotta zoom in here. Zoom. Okay, we will have the chart. In fact, we'll have, I think, that very chart on there. So how many grams of potassium nitrate? There's potassium nitrate. Can be dissolved in 300 grams of water at 50 degrees. So now we're gonna come to the 50 degree temperature. And when we come up here, does that look to you like it's 92-ish? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm gonna say it looks to me like it's 92 grams, but um, let's see. Oh, I'm on the wrong part here, sorry. 92 grams in 100 grams. But that's, that's the base solubility. Let me double check, 50 degrees, potassium nitrate. Looks to me like the line's a little bit higher. So, but they wanna know how much we dissolved in 300 grams. Well, that's three times the amount. It's gonna end up being 90, we gotta multiply that by, it'll be 92 times three. Or we can put X grams of solute and then if we're going to do that mathematically we got to get rid of the 300 grams here so we got to multiply each side by 300 grams which means that side by 300 grams 
these guys cancel out there and then 100 goes in there three three times 92 we calculated this last time I think what was it nobody in here in this class has that answer 276 grams of solute would be in the 300 gram sample And it looks like this will be our, probably our last question with the time we have left on here. At 40 degrees, 80 grams of sodium nitrate are dissolved into 100 grams of water. Is this solution going to be saturated, which means it could hold more? Is it unsaturated? Excuse me. It cannot hold any more. Is it unsaturated? That means that it could hold more or super saturated. So 40 degrees right here. And we're looking for sodium nitrate. And right up there, so the, the solubility of sodium nitrate at 40 degrees looks to me like it's about 102, oh, sorry, 102 grams per 100 grams. So that's the solubility. Now, the question says, if we had 40 grams of sodium nitrate dissolved, so if we had this set up, if we had 80, 80 grams per 100, can we add more? Yeah. Yeah, we actually we can because we could at 40 degrees, we could have 102 grams. We only have 82. So would that make this solution saturated? Super, well, actually, this one right here is saturated. So our choice is either super saturated or unsaturated. And this one's unsaturated. Describe the solution dissolving process of an ionic compound. Ionic compounds are very, 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 very polar. They can dissolve very easily in water. Okay, I'm going to stop it there because we're out of time. <laughs>